Over the last four seasons, there's a case to be made that Bruno Fernandes has been one of, if not the most important player for Manchester United. And he's done that for a number of different managers now, not least Eric Ten Hag. He's been very important for Eric Ten Hag getting the club to where they are now. But Eric Ten Hag doesn't want the club to stay where they are now. He wants them to get better. And as he does that, there's the potential for Bruno Fernandes to actually cause him a few headaches along the way. But before we get to talking about why that might be the case, let's look at why it is that Bruno Fernandes is so good. And the answer to that is creativity. So on the board in front of me here, I've just got all of the chances created and assists that Bruno Fernandes has put up in open play in the current season. So these grey lines here are passes that he's made that have then led to a teammate taking a shot. And these yellow lines then are passes that he's made that have resulted in a teammate getting a goal. We can see there there's four assists, these yellow lines. But actually, if you look at the underlying numbers, it's closer to about six that you might have expected him to get from these sorts of situations. But actually, the interesting thing for me to do, I think, is to look at the areas in which these passes are coming from, break them down into buckets, and then look at the percentage of chances created from each of these different areas, because what that shows up is a huge amount of variety from Bruno Fernandes then. We can see that he is obviously tending towards this central space because he is a number 10. He does operate in this area. He also sometimes plays on the right as well. So you can see the numbers over here a little bit higher. But interestingly enough, the biggest area of his creativity is over in this left half space here. And this is interesting because for a right footer, you might expect crosses into the box to come from this area because it's easier to hook your foot around and pull the ball across the goal. But in this area, what we can see is that there's a huge amount of chances being created by just simple passes into the box, probably to an overlapping runner. And that would make a certain amount of sense when you think that Marcus Rashford is operating off the left. So he's running on this diagonal and Bruno Fernandes is then just playing those balls through into the box. So Bruno Fernandes, really important to Manchester United because he is able to generate those chances that Marcus Rashford thrives on. And this creativity on the part of Bruno Fernandes shows up really well when you compare him with his peers. So what we've got here is midfielders broken down by non-penalty expected goals plus expected assists. And as you can see, the names that he is alongside here, Kevin De Bruyne, understandably top of that list, a really creative player for Manchester City. Martin Erdegaard is a really important cog in that Arsenal machine that is leading the league right now. And then we've got Bruno Fernandes in third place. So he is an elite creative player. But it's not just this season where Bruno Fernandes is really standing out. Actually, across his time at Manchester United, he's put up similarly impressive figures. So we've got four seasons of his data here. This first two seasons were under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. We've got Ralph Rangnick here and then Eric Ten Hag in the current season. And across that time, you can see consistency across the board. So his overall figure then is gonna be between 0.4 and 0.5 in every case. We can see that actually there's a few things that do stand out in terms of expected goals. He was much more productive in previous seasons. That's dropped down a little bit with Eric Ten Hag. But what we can see is that his expected assist numbers have jumped up as well. So what we can see is just really elite creative numbers from Bruno Fernandes across his time at Manchester United. But there is a problem here and that shows up if we look at some of his underlying data. So I've got Bruno Fernandes pizza chart in front of me and there's a couple of things that stand out to me as I look at it. The first one is, is that there's no area in this pizza chart where he's really excelling. There's no metric that is fully filled out in our chart, which is a bit surprising, I think, for an elite player like Bruno Fernandes. But the other thing to notice is there are some areas of significant weakness. So this metric here, defending intensity is down, defending impact is below 50, which is a problem, I think, in an Eric Ten Hag team where the pressing is a super important part of controlling games. The other area that's concerning is this area here, carry and dribble volume as a metric. You can see that Bruno Fernandes is below the 10th percentile here. And this stands up to the eye test because if you watch Bruno Fernandes, there's a couple of things I think that stand out. One is that he doesn't have the ability to have explosive pace off a standing start, which can make it harder to dribble, make it harder to be press resistant. The other thing is that he actually has a little bit of a technical deficiency in terms of possessing the ball. So because Bruno Fernandes can't hold onto the ball for extended periods of time, that means he moves the ball on, he becomes a high volume passer. And this has a good aspect and a bad aspect. The good side of this is that it's actually the high volume passing aspect that makes him such a creative player. Because he can't hold onto the ball for very long, what he's gonna try and do is get the ball into those more dangerous areas as quickly as possible. He's gonna try more high risk passes and he's just gonna try and generate things for his teammates. But that also comes with a downside because 
While you're playing in that way, you're not actually able to control games very well. If you give the ball back to the opposition with a high risk pass, then they are going to start attacking you. And this causes a problem because in the long run, Eric Ten Hag doesn't just want his teams to be able to create lots of chances. He also wants them to be able to control the game as well. So Bruno Fernandes is a really elite creative player. Manchester United have to play him because if they drop him, they're not going to get as many goals. But at the same time, he does have significant flaws in his game. Now, surely that is a problem for Eric Ten Hag. Well, actually, that's not the case because if we look through some of his more recent midfields at Ajax, you can see that where there are players who have weaknesses in their game, those things are covered by other players. So on the board in front of me here, I've got the two midfields that he became famous for. This is the Champions League final team of 2018-19. And then this is the more recent Ajax iteration as well. And if we look at these players, as a three, we can see that certain players will have standout metrics. So for example, carry and dribble volume between Frankie de Jong and Ryan Gravenberch here. But if we look at the other two players, not a huge amount of carry and dribble volume coming from them. And so the carry and dribble of this team is being done by Frankie de Jong in the first instance or Ryan Kravenberch in the second instance. And we can see that across the board then. There's certain players who are specialists in one thing, who have weaknesses in other areas, but in the aggregate, those weaknesses are being covered by the rest of the midfield. So Eric Ten Hag can absorb a player like Bruno Fernandes into his team, a player who has significant weaknesses in his game. But to do that, he has to bring in other players to mitigate those weaknesses. And now what you're doing is you're building a team around one player. And that raises a new problem. That problem is this. If you're building a team around one player, the ceiling of that team is only as high as the ceiling of that player. Now it's all well and good building a team around a player like Frankie de Jong, who's clearly an elite player putting up really good numbers in a lot of different areas. But the question is whether or not Eric Ten Hag will be willing to do the same for a player like Bruno Fernandes, who just isn't quite as good. And let's not forget that in a few years time, Bruno Fernandes will be in his 30s. That seems like a lot of effort and money to get the team built around a player who maybe isn't going to get Manchester United's ceiling as high as it could be. But there's also a market problem here, because actually if we look back at those midfielders in the Premier League who are putting up the same sort of creative metrics as Bruno Fernandes. We're talking about players like Kevin De Bruyne and Martin Erdegaard. This is the kind of calibre of play that Manchester United need to raise their ceiling to that level where they're consistently challenging for Premier League and Champions League titles. But there's a problem because Manchester United have been restricted in the market recently. So it could be the case that actually Bruno Fernandes is the best player available to them realistically who can put up these sorts of numbers. So this is the problem of Bruno Fernandes. Either Manchester United build their team around him and risk their ceiling not being quite as high as they might want it to be, or they have to bring someone else in. And then the question is, who could that be? So it'll be really interesting to see how Manchester United act in the transfer market over the next couple of years to see how they address that problem. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.